did you see this article about AI can predict your political orientations? No. What do you got? So it says AI can predict political orientations from blank faces and researchers fear serious privacy challenges. So this is coming out of Fox uh, business news. And here we go. Researchers are warning that facial recognition technologies are more threatening than previously thought and pose serious challenges to privacy after a study found that artificial intelligence can be successful in predicting a person's political orientation based on images of expressionless faces. That is wild. So like their expressionless faces? Yeah. Oh, wow. A recent study published in the Journal of American Psychology, excuse me, American Psychologist, says an algorithm's ability to accurately guess one's political views is on par with how well job interviews predict job success or alcohol drives aggressive alcohol drives aggressiveness. <laughs> Lead author Michael Kaczynski told Fox News Digital that 591 participants filled out political orientation questionnaires before the AI captured what he described as a numerical fingerprint of their face and compared them to a database of their responses to predict their views. Wow. I think the people don't realize how much they expose by simply putting a picture out there. Said Kaczynski, an associate professor of organizational behavioral. Gosh, I can't talk organizational behavior at Stanford university's graduate school of business. Wow. Says we know that people's sexual orientation, political orientation, religious views should be protected. It's used. It used to be different in the past. You could enter anybody's Facebook account and see, for example, their political views, the likes, the pages they follow. But many years ago, Facebook closed this because it was clear for policymakers and Facebook journalists that it was just not acceptable. It's too dangerous, he continued. So imagine that, just an expressionless photo. Do you think it's because liberals are so angry all the time? <laughs> they just have like... <laughs> just raging. They just have like crow's feet and like wrinkles in their forehead. Well, I, I think this is the... My mind immediately goes to China. Um, mm. Well, they're already... I mean, they're already using this stuff, right? Social right. credit score... Social credit score, but the, it's like the brain in a sense. So like I, I could see you from probably 400 feet and I would know it was you. Me? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like you, you would, I, I would just know from your gate. I would know from all the moments of time in my memories with you and like, uh, you know, you, you just know. And so I think it's, it's interesting. I, I think the. We, we're seeing the use cases for it in places like China. Uh, I don't love it from the application of I, I, these. Are, this is the part of artificial intelligence that I don't like um, when we're talking about surveillance and your choices that you're going to be making and, and these kinds of things where it's like it's now gone from utility of, you know, of assisted living to now you're, you're touching on moral coercion, persuasion, what agendas, like you're, you're rolling into a different camp of discussion whenever you start talking about what people's choices are and how AI and those things are going to in, interact with it. And uh, so I know when people hear that, they're like, that's crazy. Yeah. Guess how many surveillance cameras are in China? Uh, probably 2.6 million. That's cute. <laughs> According to industry research, re researchers, IHS market, <clears throat> at the end of 29, there were 770 million surveillance cameras well, that's what I said. in the world. Hold on. In the world. <laughs> 770 million in the world. Guess how many of those were in China? Oh, easy. 80% of them. 415.8 million of them were located in China. If these trends continue by the end of 21, there will be about a billion in the world and 540 million in China. Oh, okay. So let me tell you about our, why, why, why would China care so much about surveying and surveillancing its population? Uh, it's control, complete and utter control. <clears throat> it's freaking wild. Complete and utter control. But here's the thing. Here's, here is the thing though. This gets blanketed, especially in the West here. This doesn't get, this gets ushered in through uh, convenience, through comfort. Yep. So, we were traveling to Arizona for a client and Cole and C-Rock, Cole and C-Rock, Cole and T-Bone over here, <laughs> C-Rock and T-Bone are guys, we were going through the line and they just went and got social credit scored uh, because they went through and got scanned visually 
gave up the boarding pass. And me, I'm over here like, wait a second, what is happening? And, and I said, ma'am, is this voluntary? It was, so you, you no longer need your boarding pass. You give your ID and you step in front of the video camera and it scans you. Was it clear? No, it wasn't clear. That's the thing. It wasn't a special service for moving along. It's being, that's what I'm saying. It's being ushered through these channels and then it gets distributed to the broader pan, the broader population. And, and so now literally we're going up to the line, you know, why did I download my boarding pass to my app? Cause I thought I needed it. Nope. They're like, give me your ID, put your ID in and then stand in front of this camera. Wow. And was I this was at Denver. This is Denver. And I was oh. like, I was like, is this optional? And she was like, oh yeah, it's optional. And, but that was the thing is like, it's not communicated that it's optional. So they're, they're already like in subtle ways, taking away your choice. They don't even offer it to you anymore. Right. So you get conditioned to, you get conditioned to do that, to just go through it. Um, and then it becomes a part of everyday life, which I'm sure they didn't ask the people's Republic of China, all the citizens of like, Hey, can we put 400 million cameras on you? They were just like doing it yeah, and doing it in ways where the public wasn't interacting with it. Um, I know even when I was growing up, they were installing cameras in our neighborhoods and stuff. Granted, they were violent neighborhoods and things, but right. the people didn't say, put these cameras up. It was governing bodies. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, again, pros and cons to everything. Right. The technology has some good use cases, but at the same time, it can always be used to the extreme negatively. For sure. And so the, the truth in all of these, these last several minutes is that AI is coming and it's going to encroach on your business. So we had Brett Ramberg on to talk about it. We've been talking about it since the first time we talked about it, but in, I don't want to say embrace it because that sounds like a, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you embrace this. But you need to take the time to understand it. Yeah. <clears throat> to stick your hand in the sand and choose willful ignorance is not a, a good path. To it's not a solution. It's, it's definitely not a solution. Yeah. And yeah, well, shout out to all the AI cr- business owners out there who are literally changing industries. Yeah. Like, I mean, we're using it in our business. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely here to stay, get it, get used to it, get adapted to it. <clears throat> yeah. Don't put your head in the sand. Don't put your head in the sand. And um, yeah. Well, Check out our interview with Brett, that segment. Yeah, we, we can was, link that. Yeah, that was really good. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know or didn't get a chance to check out last week or two weeks ago, his, his breakdown on a lot of things is going to be really helpful for you and where to get started. 